Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Wool and Spinning Podcast. I'm Rachel, your host. I can be found everywhere as Well for Pearls. I think the only place I'm not on is uh, Facebook. Um, so yeah, everywhere else, Instagram, Ravelry, Twitter, Pinterest, I am Well for Pearls. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is September's episode of the monthly show. Um, I can't believe we're up to episode nine. It's, um, it's crazy. Um, I had committed to doing this for a year. So episode 12 in December, um, I'm going to have to make a decision about whether I'm going to keep going, but, um, yeah, episode nine already. (laughs) I have back episodes. It's crazy. Um, So thank you so much for coming back if you're a returning viewer and if you're new to the show, welcome. Um, I have a couple of things that have been in the works over the last month and a half and I'm really excited to share them with you. But if you are in the uh, Sweet Georgia Yarns Fiber Club and you don't want to see September's colorway yet, um, I will warn you before I show it and I'll do it right at the end of the show um, and you can just stop listening So um, or watching, sorry. Uh, So I will warn you, but um, I'm really excited to share some big news around that um, with you guys, Uh, which actually, if you follow the blog, um, oh no, this is going to be coming out before. Anyways, (laughs) Um, yeah, there's some big news around that, so I'm excited to share that with you. But if you don't want to see spoilers for the Sweet Georgie Yarns Fiber Club, uh, I will be showing it at the end of the show, and um, I will warn you before, and you can stop watching. Um, I have a review this month. Um, If you follow the blog, you will have seen a quite in-depth blog post on Monday, uh, September 21st. So that was like four days ago, five days ago. Um, And I am going to show you a little bit about my spinning on here because there are some people that don't follow the blog and they only watch the show. So um, I'll be talking about that. Um, I'll probably talk about that after I share with you uh, what I've been spinning this month and also what I've been prepping for Spinzilla. My wheels have been quite quiet around here this month. I've had a couple of projects that I've been working on um, that were not, they were for fun, but they were also um, under a little bit of a deadline, uh, the review for one. And um, I, so I didn't get a lot of spinning done for myself, but that's actually been okay because I, I, I like to take, last year I took a break from spinning in September uh, in prep for Spinzilla and I was really glad that I did because by the time uh, Spinzilla had happened and like by about, it starts at midnight on like, a, you know, one minute after one o'clock on Monday morning. Uh, October 5th this year Um, by like Friday morning I was pretty burned out but I was still excited to spin what I was spinning so um, I thought this year I'll just take a break in September just go really easy if I don't spin anything for the next couple weeks that's okay Um, and just kind of really look forward to getting onto my wheels um, for Spinzilla. So I'll show you what I've been prepping for Spinzilla and um, and then I'll show you uh, the Fiber Club for Sweet Georgia and share with you a little announcement. Um, So the first thing I've been working on this month, and it's finished actually, was um, for the Ravelry group Completely Twisted and Arbitrary. It's a really fun spinning group. They do a lot of stuff together. Um, They have quarters throughout the year. So um, there's right now we're in the, I think it's June to the end of September, I feel like. They're like three or four months. Anyways, they feature um, an indie dyer. I'll link to it in the show notes down below so you can see kind of what it's all about. And they're also doing another spin along right now called My Precious Sal. So My Precious Spin Along. Um, It's encouraging people to spin um, stuff from their stash that is um, precious. So something that you've been putting off spinning, something that's maybe a little bit intimidating, something that was really expensive. Um, something that came to mind for me was, um, I have some alpaca slivers in my, um, stash and I've been really wanting to card some of it up to mix the colors to make like a, a heathered yarn. And I thought that would be a really cool thing to do. Cause I'm, I feel a little bit intimidated by it cause I, um, it, it's going to be a lot of work and it's kind of precious fiber to me. So, um, 
I thought, oh, if I had had the, the time, um, I would have participated participated and that's what I would have uh, spun. I think Chrissy of the Snappy Stitches podcast, she's a really uh, dear friend of mine. Um, she's on a podcasting hiatus right now, but um, I think she was going to participate, but I'm not sure if she's actually been able to. So I'll pick her brain at Knit City uh, in October and um, find out if she actually did. Um, so yeah, so this was for the completely twisted and arbitrary uh, spin along. So this is um, Into the World. That was the featured dyer. Um, beautiful colors. I hope the camera is picking it up because uh, it's mostly um, lime yellows, tealy greens, and this beautiful pop of like turquoise blue. So this is going to be socks. Um, I spun a traditional three ply um, at quite a high ratio. I, th I spun it on my what did I spin this on? Oh, I spent I spun this on the Hanson. I've been practicing with the Wooly Winder, so I still find that on the Hanson being an electric spinner, um, and the uptake on uh, the Wooly Winder is quite. Um, it's just firmer than with a treadle wheel because when you're treadling. Um, I don't think sometimes, you know, we go on autopilot as spinners and I think sometimes we forget that our treadling, especially I find personally on my double treadle wheel when I get on my, because both of my wheels are double treadle, but I recently had acquired a single treadle wheel that I could make it double treadle, but I, I kept it in single. Um, I actually just let it go because I wasn't using it. Um, the... I find, especially with my double treadle wheels, I, I get into this real like autopilot mode, um, especially if I have my sample card of what I'm spinning, how I'm going to spin it, um, and I can keep referring my singles to the sample card and, and compare what I'm doing. Um, I go on to total autopilot and my treadling speeds up and slows down based on what my hands are doing. So your uptake changes when you do that because even though the wheel is pulling in, if you're not, um, if you stop treadling, your uptake stops, <laughs> right? That makes sense. Um, everything slows down. And then if you speed up, so say you're spinning your single and all of a sudden you've got too much twist, things are going in too fast, you're treadling away and... Um, or like for me, I find like I get interrupted. Um, so all of a sudden everything's sort of um, getting away from me. On a treadle wheel, you just stop, you just stop treadling and it fixes everything, right? And you can, you know, you can play with your fiber a little bit. You can pull it apart to like draft out the extra twist or you can uh, put a little bit of extra twist in it if you need to. You can pull it out and then put more twist, It whatever you're doing, right? But with the Hansen, it's electric. It just keeps on going. <laughs> so I have really found, and I know I reflected on this in the audio post back in July, uh, that I think for me, the secret with the e-spinner is, with the mini spinner, with the electric spinner, is that your spinning, for me, my spinning all of a sudden has to be a whole new level of consistent. Um, so I get really consistent yarn and, um, I mean, this is probably one of the most perfect yarns I've ever spun. Um, but you've got to be re like, I've got to be really aware of the fact that it's just going to keep on pulling in. And so when you hit the, the, I, a lot of people use the, it's got a, uh, the, the Hanson mini spinner has a, um, um, uh, foot pedal that some people put it on the floor to start it and stop it and uh, most people I think keep it on the like the counter where they're spinning uh, and they hit it with their hand um, I find I don't hit mine enough so I'm trying to fix whatever's going on and what I really actually need to do is hit the hand pedal uh, the hand uh, the foot pedal so um, yeah, that's been a bit of a learning curve. So I decided to spin this on my Hanson so that I could keep working on that and keep learning from that, um, learning that consistency and that pull of the Wooly Winder. It's just a really steep learning curve. That's that's all it is. Um, I don't love it. I'm going to I'm going to be totally honest. Um, I don't love the Hanson as as a way of spinning. 
this was my leftovers, uh, so I Navajo plied it. I've got enough. I think I have, I think I posted that I have about on my Ravelry handspun projects page. I think I have like 50 yards of this. I really like it. I almost kind of like it more than the blended um, skein. I'm kind of torn about which one I like more. I wish I had two braids and then I could have done one Navajo plied and one uh, traditional three ply. Um, I think I'm going to use this up by um, either, uh, I've got some beautiful Coriadale uh, two ply in my stash that is um, fingering weight and I'm thinking about doing a striped toque for Nora or um, I'm going to use this for the heels of the socks. But I have more than enough yardage of this so I don't need this for the heels. So anyways, we'll see. Probably I'll do nothing with this and I'll just keep it. And then the leftovers from this, I'll skein the leftovers from this and then I'll have the two like samples. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do. The other thing that I was working on, um, I don't mean to sound really negative about the Hanson, by the way. Um, it's just been a really steep learning curve. And for me, I really love um, my treadle wheels. You know, I've got two double treadle wheels. They work like, they're just beautiful. Um, I love them and they work really well for me. So, um, and I like that way of spinning a little bit better. So the Hanson is a wonderful wheel. It's a great production wheel. I can ply really, really fast. Um, knowing what I know now, would I buy it again? I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that. I don't know. Um, would I buy my Lendrum and my Matchless again? Absolutely. Without a doubt. I would, I would definitely have those, those two wheels. I keep my Matchless in a uh, double treadle or sorry, it's my matchless is a double treadle. I keep it in double drive and my Lendrum is scotch tension only. And I obviously have it in scotch tension and I love both my wheels. I couldn't choose which one I like better. I like them both equally and I like them for different reasons. Um, yeah. So that said, I spun this on my, on my Lendrum. Um, this was some merino locks that I had in my stash that I was given by my friend Diana. Uh, this was a New Zealand super fine merino. Um, it's still got some lanolin in it. Um, I washed the locks individually and then I um, flipped them and spun from the lock. Um, it's just unbelievably soft. I have tons of cream uh, creamy white locks left and I also have some um, really dark dark brown um, locks those are works in progress but I did make a tiny dent in all of the that merino that I've got so when it's all done I'm going to count up my yardage and um, I'm thinking about making a toque for myself or a cowl and I'll do like some sort of a color work because actually the because this is so gray um, the when it's all said and done it'll look really great with my rain jacket and of course it rains here all the time so we've gone from a heat wave to rain and like deep fall it's um weird and um i it hit the news in other parts of canada i don't i, I don't think it probably hit the news in the u.s but um we had unbelievable wind storms here a few weeks ago and I tried to record but like the wind going by the window it was unbelievable and we had tons of trees come down in our neighborhood and all around um, southwestern British Columbia uh, because everything's been so dry and uh, there was a few people in our neighborhood that had trees come down on their garages and on their sheds and thankfully we were okay we were a bit worried but our tree We've got a really big tree in our front yard and if it was going to go anywhere it would have actually gone down into the cul-de-sac but um just because the the wind was blowing um um west so um away from our house so it would have been okay but the, this the noise and we we were without power for um about 18 hours my parents were out for about 36 but most people i know were out for a few days so um yeah it was a little bit not so great after such a hot summer. And actually that's when I finished this. <laughs> I had nothing else to do, the power's out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna talk um, about the prep that I've been doing for Spinzilla. Um, I'm gonna pause the camera here and just move some things around and um, then I can show you um, what um, I've got going.
Okay, so I have been working on making some bats for Spinzilla because I'd like to do mostly woolen spinning. I'm spinning for two sweaters. Um, I don't think I'm going to get it all done, but I would like to have the option of working on two different things during Spinzilla to keep the interest up while we're um, starting to burn out towards the end of the tour. So I'm going to have a project going on my Landrum and I'm going to have a project going on my Matchless. Um, so the first thing that I've been working on is actually a BFL alpaca blend that I've been making. So I have this um, alpaca in my stash that's been hanging out for a while and it's just unbelievably, like it's just beautiful fiber. Really, really fine, gorgeous, gorgeous creamy white. And I also have this BFL and it's undyed as well and it's been hanging out my stash for a while. So um, I did some math and I figured out how much alpaca I needed and how much BFL I needed per bat to make my drum carter. Um, they say it holds two ounces, but I find it actually really only likes um, about an ounce and a half. So I did the math to figure out how much based on an ounce and a half bat I needed of alpaca and BFL to make an 85-15% blend. So the sweater is going to be 85% uh, BFL and 15% alpaca. And these are the bats that I've been making and they're just gorgeous. They smell sheepy. Oh, they are so, they're folded into their, in half. And then, so this is how big the bats are. Isn't that huge? It's huge. And that's not even like fully opening it up because I don't want it to fall apart. Um, so I, what I've been doing, and I've been actually doing this in the evenings because the kids have been fighting bedtime like you wouldn't believe. I don't know what is going on. Nora's teething. Um, she still doesn't really have any teeth at 18 months, but James is just kind of being a bit of a monkey. Um, but that's okay. He's three. He's allowed to be a monkey. Um, so what I've been doing is actually pulling them apart and making these um, like sort of roving, rovings, I guess. It's a piece of fluff. And then I've been making these like little nests so that when I go to spin, I'm ready to go. So um, I'm filling up my my bin here of uh, all my stuff. And then actually um, I did my sample to get it ready for, um, uh, and I washed it. And then I, I don't have it with me, but I have a card um, that has a picture of the singles on it. So I'm spinning this sort of uh, sport weight, light, light DK, two ply, because I would like to knit um, the custom fit Charlie's cardigan. It's got a panel of lace that goes up the front, and I thought a two ply um, would be perfect because it'll really open up the lace. And I've already bought the pattern. I already generated my custom fit um, measurements. Uh, and I have already got that ready to go. So I just have to spin for it. So I, I calculated how much fiber I need to, based on my sample, I did a yards per pound, uh, calculation and I figured out, um, how much fiber I needed to spin to get the yardage that I needed. And so now it's just a matter of spinning it. So that's been kind of neat. I've been really enjoying doing that on the drum carter. It's been really fun. Um, I really like my drum carter and I really enjoy using it, but I keep it in the garage and sometimes I, I, I just have to, we just, our house is not conducive to having it in the house because the kids and James will get into it and so on and so forth. But, um, sometimes I wish it was like right here and I could just whip up stuff. Um, so, but that's not the way it is right now in our life. <laughs> um, so when I put in my order for the complete, completely twisted and arbitrary uh, spin along um, for the Into the World Indie Dyer, which I already talked about with the eating grapes off wallpaper, I don't think I actually told you what the colorway was, but it's a one of a kind for the um, for the spin along for so it's not like it'll be available again. Um, I also got some English Shetland from Into the World called Equinox. It's four ounces and it's got. Um, browns and tealy green, 
blue, purple is in there. I don't, it's not picking it up. It's here. This is all purple. Um, and browns again and, and grays and yeah, really like, well, like the winter equinox. Um, so I, um, I bought this because I have a pound of this. So this is from uh, Custom Woolen Mills. They're located in Alberta. Um, Chrissy from the Snappy Stitches podcast and I did a uh, order. Um, it's a pound of Shetland. It's natural, um, undyed. I don't want to move the bag around too much, but it's basically this color. Um, and so what I am planning on doing, and I'm going to be working on this uh, this week actually, um, in the evenings, is to card this up and... This would be the body of a sweater. Oh, that was my finger on the back of the bag. Um, this would be the body of a sweater. And then this will be the yoke. Um, so I'm thinking about using the garter yoke cardigan from Melissa LeBaire that was published years ago, like 2007 years ago, 2008 maybe. Um, anyways, it has a garter stitch top down yoke and then you go into the body of the sweater. So a lot of people have used hand spun for the yoke part for the garter, and then they go into um, the um, the body of the sweater in another color, like in a in some sort of a heathered or semi solid or solid yarn. Um, I'm probably not going to use the pattern. I have a copy of it. I still have the original magazine, um, which I've kept all these years. I'm probably not going to use. Um, the original pattern. I'm probably just going to use it for inspiration and I'm actually probably going to do custom fit. So I'm probably going to do an actual like um, seamed set in sleeves type cardigan but then from like like here up would be garter and then the same on the back. So like from um, just above the armholes where the arm like maybe two inches after the arm maybe an inch after the armholes shaping starts so it'd be like about here on the fronts and then same on the back and then the sleeves will just be stocking it so that's the plan for that and i'm gonna spin it not like super fine but i'm thinking like a sport weight and then uh knit it up probably on two like 3.5 needle 3.75 millimeter needles probably so like a us um what is that us three or four my us sizing is terrible that was one of the feedbacks i got for the pattern testing was oh can you provide the us sizes for the needles and i was like yeah yeah i haven't gotten to that yet but i'm <laughs> thinking oh what are they um it's funny how we just use what we use um, so that's something that I'm going to be working on. I'm probably not going to spin the Into the World braid during Spinzilla, but I would like to spin the Shetland, uh, like the plain from Custom Will and Mills. So I'm going to throw that on the drum carter. It came in roving, but there's a lot of VM in it still, and putting it through the drum carter a few times would just clean it out a little bit more. So that's the purpose of doing that. Um, okay, the Louette review. So I had an opportunity through... Um, stitch craft stitch craft marketing stephanie <laughs> um i'll link to it right here it'll come up um so i had an opportunity to work with her a little bit and review uh Louette north america's spinzilla pack uh for september 2015. um they have been offering uh packs big boxes i'll pick it up here big boxes of stuff to get spinners ready for Spinzilla. You're gonna hear some stuff fall. So um, she offered me the opportunity to do the, uh, the August uh, box, but it was actually really late in the month. So we decided to do September instead. And what was included in September's box was a pound of superwash wool, a pound undyed, a pound of undyed Wensleydale combed top they're all comb top um, and a pound of a wool mohair blend, which was an 82%, um, an 18% mohair blend. Um, I've spun Polworth in wool before and I did not like it. Uh, 
Polworth and wool, Polworth and mohair, and I didn't like it very much. Uh, it ended up being very heavy. It was very dense. It was quite a high uh, blend. I think it was like 60-40. Um, I just didn't like it very much, but this was lovely. Um, the yarn's not heavy. It's I spun it kind of dense because I was going for um, a thicker yarn, but um, it's really, really lovely. And I'd love to see it drum carded and then spun uh, semi-worsted or semi-woolen because uh, it would add a lot of air to it and it would be really warm and it's just, and it took the dye. Oh, so there's the three pounds of wool and then there's also a um, gay wools dyes included. So there were six samples um, included in the um, like six different bags of all the different colors. And like, look at these colors. They are just amazing. The camera's not gonna pick them up perfectly, but look at those yellows. This one here is one of my favorites. These here, oh, gorgeous. This one and the gray and the black. You never see really good blacks. This is a really good black. Um, so I received coal, the black, tomato, daisy, um, cornflower, which is this really, really pretty blue here. It's this one here. It's really, really pretty. And indigo, which funnily enough is my favorite color. Like that's my favorite color of all time right now. <laughs> I should say right now because it's always changing. My favorite color for years now has been this color. It's sort of like this okra-y, pumpkin-y color here. And now I'm kind of moving on to like, oh, and I love these like okra, yellowy. Ugh, I love those. And now I'm into the blues. I'm kind of getting into purple a little bit, but mostly, mostly like musk and that's musk here. And then indigo. And I'm kind of getting into like these really dark greens now. I just bought a long sleeve t-shirt that's a dark forest green, which I haven't done for years. So it came with six um, samples. So enough to do what I received in the box if you wanted to dye everything. Um, so this was the Wensley Dale and they came in half pound bags, which I really liked. And it, they were all just beautifully, um, this is the superwash beautifully prepped um i've actually just ordered some of their organic polworth because if you follow the blog you will know that my beautiful custom fit best sweater ever felted when i washed it i've told webs because it's valley yarns amherst and they said you know thank you for the feedback and they would pass it on and blah 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 but it was so heartbroken um, that aside, <laughs> so when I ordered the yarn to make another one, um, I'm just going to knit up the exact same sweater again. Um, I ordered some, or, some organic, uh, Polworth as well, cause, um, I'd really like to knit a sweater and, uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, their, their fiber is just beautifully prepped, Luet stuff, just really, really lovely. So this was um, a little two ounce, two ply that I spun that's the undyed Wensleydale, and it's just got this lovely halo. It's, I made it really low twist. Um, you only, so Wensleydale doesn't really have like crimps, but to keep it not confusing, they call it crimps per inch in Wensleydale still because otherwise it's just too much different language but Wensleydale sort of more has like an s um, and in an, in a lock you might have three or four s's um, so it doesn't need a lot of twist it's very long um, the the uh, sorry for the bags I tried to prevent this as much as possible but I'll show you the the staple length of Wensleydale it's long so that's probably 10 centimeters, four inches. No, that's longer than that. It's probably 15 centimeters, seven, eight, seven or eight inches. Yeah, yeah, it's like seven, seven inches. It's like seven or seven inches. 
Yeah. So you don't need a lot of twist to hold that together, right? If I pull it apart a little bit and put a little bit of twist in it, that's not very much and it's, and it's um, locked, fiber locked. So I put my standard flyer on my Lundrum, which I don't use very much. I use my fast flyer mostly. Um, and I use the lowest whirl ratio I could, which is six to one. And that was how I got this yarn. And so it's really low twist, beautiful halo. Um, Wensleydale will continue to hail, uh, halo when you wear it. And, um, but it's still very durable. It's got a, you can see the sheen on it from the, from the window. And then after I had spun it, so I'd actually done a three ply. This was the leftovers. Um, so I two plied the leftovers. I dyed it with the tomato which didn't come out perfectly. Um, I don't think I set the dye perfectly. I'm still learning, but the yarn is beautiful and it's got a lovely halo. And I think this is actually gonna be a, um, a toque for Nora because it's really soft and I can absolutely wear this next to my skin. It's, it's, it's nice. And for just the brim, it's definitely soft enough for her to wear it. Um, against her skin so and I have enough yardage so because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the rest of it I'd like to do a uh, two ply and I'd like to knit um, the uh, lace shawl but I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that and when I'm gonna do that so that was my skein that I did and I really enjoyed doing this this was really fun and it's a beautiful oh the yarn is gorgeous and then there's also super wash a uh, super wash wool um, not that one. So it's just plain superwash wool. It's super soft. I don't know what's what wool it is. It's some sort of just kind of arbitrary wool, but like it is soft. Um, I'm not a big superwash fan. You guys know that, but um, it takes dye. It, it same as the Wensleydale and the long wools. Uh, superwash takes dye like nobody's business. Um, so I, I, and I really can only have superwash socks. Um, so I did this skein and I'm going to do a blog post about this because I actually did this on my wool combs. So I dyed the top, the, uh, I dyed two ounces of the top from the bag. And then, um, in indigo cornflower, which is one of the blues and avocado, which was the green that I received. And then I combed them. So I lashed, I only used one of my combs. So I set the other one aside. So envision this being dyed, okay? And it's maybe got green and indigo. So what I did was I lashed it onto my comb like this and then drafted it off. And I just kept doing that until I had no more. And then I pulled it off. I didn't comb it back and forth like you traditionally would with combs. I just pulled it off. And then I spun that. So you're kind of like combing process, like you're combing comb top again. You're doing it, you know, you've got the comb top and then, and then you're recombing it by hand, but you're not really combing it because you're just blending it. So once it was in these little nests, I spun it. And that's how I ended up with this really blended sock yarn. Super high twist. I absolutely love it. So I kind of like made my own color kind of. And yet I did it with three separate colors. So you, op, this is called optical um, mixing. So there's these three colors in here, but your eye makes a new color. So really cool. And I love it. So I have enough here for one sock. I need to do um, two more ounces and then I'll have enough for my second sock. And then the last thing that I did was, I'm gonna put my combs away because I don't like to have them out when the kids are around. So I'm gonna pause here and I'll just put them away and get them in a safe spot. Okay, so the last thing was the wool mohair blend. So I was a little bit intimidated by this because I don't, like I said, I don't love mohair. This turned out, amazing <laughs> so um this was dyed with the coal the tomato 
and the daisy. And I looped the fiber like this and I dyed coal, uh, tomato, and then daisy on the bottom so that the coal and the daisy wouldn't ever touch. And it worked like a hot damn. Um, it's bright. The black came out beautifully. I did this in the microwave before I spun it. It's a two ply. Uh, it's an Aran weight, so it's about eight to nine wraps per inch. You can see the mohair in places sticking out. That's not dog hair. Um, yeah, I really like how this turned out. It's really fun. And uh, the, the review post on Monday uh, included some photos of the fiber before I spun it. And I have to say, like, it's pretty gorgeous. <laughs> so um, I'll maybe include a photo down below in the show notes too. Um, so this is going to be uh, for Nora as well. And I'm actually thinking that she's going to get a pair of mittens. She really needs some mittens. It's soft again next to the skin soft. And um, I think they'd look really neat as mittens. And uh, yeah, I just thought it would be, they'll just be wild and crazy mittens for her. So yeah, really cool. I was really happy how this turned out. Um, the mohair is, a, like I said, it's an 82% wool, 18% um, mohair. This isn't heavy. It's not unpleasant at all. It's really lovely. I would buy this again. Um, and I kind of have some plans to um, do something with the other. This is only two ounces. I have a plan, some plans to do um, with the remaining... Uh, it's it's more than a pound and a, uh, it's more than three quarters of a pound that I have left. So the troops are back from the park, so I'm going to pause here and um, I will share with you Sweet Georgie Yarns Fiber Club for September 2015. Okay, so I have the best family ever, <laughs> uh, but it means I need to do this last segment really quickly because they're going to wait for me to finish. So uh, if you haven't seen and you don't want to see and you haven't received your Sweet Georgia Yarns September 2015 Fiber Club, um, it, it, stop watching. <laughs> um, but I do have some news surrounding all of this. Um, I am now going, I've known Felicia for a very long time and we were chatting the other day at the studio uh, back at the end of August. So it was a few weeks ago now. Um, she always includes recommendations uh, in the Fiber Club spinning pack that everybody gets. So there's a card um, and there's always recommendations about how to spin the fiber. And sometimes it's hard to make that um, leap from what the fiber looks like in the braid to what her recommendations look like in the finished skein. And I think what happens is sometimes, you know, we get the fiber, we're not really sure what to do with it. Maybe they aren't our colors or maybe um, the fiber content, so what the actual fiber is, is a little bit intimidating and we sort of throw it in our stash and think, oh, I'll tackle that another day. Um, but it's nice to see it spun up and finished. Um, and, you know, and then you can sort of start to decide, is that what you want to do? Do you want to spin it based on Felicia's recommendations? Do you want to spin your own thing? Do your own thing? Um, so that's my new job. So I will be spinning up uh, every month's Fiber Club from now on. Um, I will be picking up the fiber at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month there will be a guest post written by me um, featuring the finished hand spun um, and how I spun it and a little bit of information about the breed or the fiber itself or whatever and on the video post there will also be at the end of the episode the spoiler for um, what I spun. So September 2015 was Superwash Targi. It's a first for Sweet Georgie Yarns, which is really exciting. And I'm going to include a photo of what the braid looked like here uh, before I show you the finished yarn, just so you can put it all together. So it's Sweet Georgie Orange's 10 year anniversary this month. So hence the colors. Um, the colorway um, was called Open Hands, which is um, lovely. And recommended was a traditional three ply. So I spun lock by lock, like staple length by staple length. I took the braid and I pulled off um, staple lengths. I've got all this fiber right here. So I will show you how I did it. So envision this being 
the fiber club, okay? And I just pulled off lock by lock and I folded it over my finger like so, pointed my finger at the orifice of the wheel and I spun off the tip, pulling, um, holding my finger. So envision my wheels over here. And so I kept my finger pointed at the wheel and I spun from the fold, creating this little web of fiber at the end. And I pulled forward, smoothed it back, pulled forward, smoothed it back. So it a lot of air entered into the singles by doing that. Um, and it gave me a really lovely fluffy yarn while also giving me the durability of a worsted spun yarn. So I'm calling this a semi-worsted because it spun from the fold, a lot of air was entered, but I used a short forward draft smoothing the fiber back as I um, went back to my fiber supply, which was on my the fold of my finger. And this is the finished yarn. So it's a traditional three ply. I am really happy with how this turned out. I got 428 yards, more than enough for socks, which is what Targi is um, really well known for. Um, it's slightly more durable than merino because this staple length is a little bit longer and it's a, just a little bit more durable. Um, Targi is an American breed that um, uh, was created by, for, by crossing Lincoln rams with Coriadale ewes, I think. If I've got that wrong, you'll see it right here. Um, yeah, I... I this is not, I'm, I'll be honest, this is not my color, <laughs> but I love how this yarn came out. Love, 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 love it. And I really enjoyed spinning it. I spun it, um, there's lots of twist in it. I spun it on quite a high whirl ratio. I can't remember now what it was, but I think it was 15 to 1, 12.6 to 1. And I spun it in double drive so that I could um, spin quite fast. And like I said, it's a traditional three ply. And then I had a little bit left over, so I Navajo applied it just for fun. And actually, the funny the, the funny thing is, with the Eden Grapes, which is also Superwash Targi, I I don't think I could choose which one I like better, and I actually slightly like the Navajo applied skein a little bit better. Um, with this, there's no competition. This, I, the traditional three-ply is what I like the best. All of those reds and pinks and purples blending together just creates such a beautiful yarn. So I'm going to divide this into two and wind them off into two center pole balls and um, I'll knit a pair of socks with this. I'll probably knit them over Christmas when we're traveling. So that is the Sweet Georgie Yarns September 2015 Fiber Club in the colorway Open Hands. So October's I'll be sharing with you um, in the video cast in October. So uh, yeah it's really exciting. So with the stuff going on with Sweet Georgia and the review for Louette and so on and so forth, I um, have been feeling like there's a lot going on with the kids. I work on the weekends. Um, you know, it's just like all of you guys. Our, our lives are busy. And so I was reminded this month to, uh, with the idea um, of commitment and gratitude and um, just taking a moment sometimes to uh, remember what our purpose is. So this quote is a little bit longer, but it really um, spoke to me this month. Just go into the room and put one chair in the center. Take the one seat in the center of the room, open the doors and windows and see who comes to visit. You will witness all kinds of scenes and actors, all kinds of temptations and stories, everything imaginable. Your only job is to stay in your seat. You will see it all arise and pass. And out of this, wisdom and understanding will come. And that's a quote from uh, H.N. Cha. Very Zen. <laughs> but I think actually for me this month, it's been uh, very important for me to remember where we're headed, where as a family, where we're headed, where I'm headed. Um, and making these decisions about my spinning and where I want to take my spinning and whatnot, it's been uh, really important to me to make some of these commitments and to start to move forward. You know, um, I'd really like to teach eventually. And so it's exciting to be making these small little baby steps along the way and, and moving in that direction. So.
With that, I hope that you have a wonderful October since we're towards the end of September. I hope back to school was okay for those of you who have little ones in school. James started preschool last week, which he just, oh my goodness, he, he was so excited and had a lot of fun. No problems with drop off and pick up and stuff. So I'm really excited for him to go again on Tuesday. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're in Canada. Um, and I'll be chatting with you towards the end of October. So with that, happy spinning.